Tacoma key fob hacking. Can your truck be stolen without the key fob? Well, good morning, everybody. How are you today? Still pretty darn cold here. And that's right, Tacoma key fob hacking. Is it really a thing? Can your truck be stolen just by somebody picking up the frequency of your key fob? Apparently it's a thing, it's been happening. Now, let me tell you first of all, if you have the old fashioned key like I do, not really a problem for you because at least you still have to have the key. Unless of course they steal the frequency of the sender on the fob to unlock the truck and then get inside, rip your wires apart, and hotwire it or something, I don't know. But the way that it works, apparently, the key fob puts out a signal, right? And a thief, a hacker, can actually grab that signal and relay it to your truck. Now, what that does is allow them to get inside and even start the truck if you have push button ignition. So I guess this is an argument for all of the old school folks out there who don't like push button start, of which I'm not one. I love push button start. I wish I had it in my Tacoma. But apparently the Tacoma can be stolen if a thief, a hacker grabs that signal and gains access to your truck. First of all, let's, let's talk about what a fob is, right? A fob, of course, is just this little device that sends out an RF signal that allows you to remote start your truck or open it up or whatever. And do you know what FOB stands for? FOB stands for Frequency Operated Button. That's it, Frequency Operated Button. I didn't know that till I looked it up, to be honest. So, apparently, a thief, if they're nearby, can grab the signal being transmitted by the key fob using a special receiver. Then they relay it to your Tacoma, unlock it, and as I said, can start it up, or hopefully at the very least, just steal stuff out of the inside of it. Now, the whole process, supposedly, takes less than a minute, 10 seconds. So once they have that signal and they're able to take control of your Tacoma, in 10 seconds, it can be gone. Now, that's comparing it to the old fashioned method, I guess, which reportedly takes an average of about two and a half minutes. So obviously much quicker if you have this key fob hacking equipment and can gain access to our Tacomas, right? Now, while I was looking at this, came across a couple other things I just thought was kind of interesting. The most stolen color out there is green, even though the most popular color is white. So if you've got that new army green or maybe even that lunar color, which has a little green in it, I guess, apparently on average, your truck is more likely to be stolen. I don't know. So how do you prevent this from happening? Well, there are a few ways to do that. Some key fobs apparently deactivate after sitting and not being used for a while, right? They disassociate from the truck and there's no signal being sent, so there's no way that you can actually pick it up because it doesn't exist, right? Number two, you can pick up a Faraday bag, a Faraday, Faraday, Faraday bag. I guess it's Faraday bag. What that is, it's a bag made out of metallic fabric that blocks the signal from anything inside or anything outside, I guess, trying to penetrate to get in to grab that signal. So you can pick up a Faraday bag and put your key remote, or key remote rather, inside. That will block the signal and defeat those trying to hack in. Now, what does a Faraday bag cost? Well, I looked, just a real quick search on the web. You can get them anywhere from $14 or so on up, you name it. Like everything else, there's always this super duper brand out there that probably claims to prevent everything. Maybe aliens can't hack it either, I don't know. But 14 bucks, not a bad investment. Number three is tinfoil. You can actually wrap your key fob in tinfoil and that will keep it from sending out the signal, right? I don't know how many layers it takes. If you're gonna go that route, 
I don't know, maybe wrap it in a couple of layers or something like that, just so that it doesn't get out. It won't penetrate the tinfoil. And then the hackers can't penetrate the tinfoil to get that signal. Now, another way you can get a tinfoil line box or just any box, I suppose, line it with tinfoil. That way you don't have to screw with rewrapping your fob every time because obviously if you're stopping the signal from getting out, you won't be able to use it either. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of it, right? So if I was gonna go that route, I would just get some kind of a little wooden box, you know, like a jewelry box or something, and then line it with tin foil, and then just throw my key in there once I'm home or I'm not using it anymore. That will defeat the process as well. Now, I did have, and what kind of made me think about this, a subscriber to the channel actually commented that this happened to them, that their car was actually stolen. Uh, by somebody hijacking their remote signal. And what they do apparently is every night they disassociate their remote from their truck. Now, to me, while that works, granted, it sounds like a real pain in the arse, right? Because if you're gonna disassociate it every night, you gotta reassociate it when you wanna leave, right? I don't wanna do that. I'd rather just throw it in one of these Faraday bags or you know, the tin foil thing. Even if I just had to wrap it, I'd probably do that as opposed to uh, disassociating it every time I wanted to make sure that nothing was gonna happen, right? So I would probably go with either the bag or just the tin foil if it really concerns you. Now, when should you be concerned? Well, if you leave your vehicle parked outside um, and somebody happens to be around that has this equipment that can grab your signal, then I suppose it's a valid concern. If you leave it parked outside at work, um, that probably would be a, a more prone place for somebody to try to grab the signal because obviously there are gonna be people coming and going, I assume, at your workplace, either when you get to work at lunchtime or when you leave at night, and it would be much easier for them to go ahead and grab that signal. Ultimately, I think the dealers, the manufacturers, need to come up with some sort of a rolling code or something. You know, it's like your garage door opener, right? That's why we have rolling codes in our garage doors for the same reason, so that people can't be driving by and pick up your signal. Doesn't mean it still can't happen, but much, much more difficult if that signal is always changing, right? And I'm surprised that dealerships or manufacturers have not done this already. Seems like a pretty simple thing. And since we have it for the little fob or push button thing for the garage door opener, why in the world couldn't they incorporate that same technology in the key fob? I don't know. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know if you've heard of this before. I'd be curious. This is pretty new to me. I, I guess I didn't really ever think about it, but apparently it's happening. And even further, if it's happened to you, I'd be really interested to know. Leave a comment. Also, real quick, if you're interested, I have two other channels. The first is Rob Motive JT, all about my 2020 Jeep Gladiator, which does have push button start, by the way. And also Rob Motive Civic, all about my adventures with the Honda Civic Sport Hatch and the Honda Civic Type R. Check them out. If you like them, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.